Hello, and welcome to Women in Business, where we interview entrepreneurs and senior managers and show you the strengths, successes, obstacles, and roadblocks women experience in business. Since I believe every person in business needs to be visible, I'd like to invite you to watch www.sob6, that's the number six, tips.com, which will give you some valuable information should you get the call to be on radio or TV, which I think is extremely important. If you'd like to contact me personally, drop me a line at Gail Carson, that's G-A-Y-L-E, Gail Carson 13 at gmail.com, or go to my website, www.spunkyoldbroad.com, and sign up for my weekly newsletter. Hi, everyone. My guest today is Karina Miranda, and what an interesting person she is. She runs a company called Bravo One. It's a proactive business solution company for small to medium-sized businesses. They work on the back-end finances of companies and send weekly or monthly reports and keep constant communication with their clients and break down finances for them, patterns, budgets, in easy-to-understand terms so they have the right tools and knowledge to make, make smart decisions and understand where their business is financially at all times while saving them the time of doing it themselves and the money of hiring an in-house staff or untrained personal personnel to do it. Uh, and what's most interesting to me about Karina, because as a former dancer, she was a dancer, a professional dancer for many, many years. So, well, first of all, welcome, Karina. And secondly, how did you go from being this fabulous dancer to working in the business world in such a technical capacity. <laughs> Thanks, Gail. I'm excited to be here. So it's uh, definitely quite a shift that I did. And dancing was my passion. It still is. I, I still love dancing. And I was actually going to school while I was dancing and I was studying education. And I actually ended up getting my degree in elementary ed with a minor in psychology. And I wanted to be a guidance counselor. And um, I graduated 2010, and during 2010, you know, everything was in a recession, and the school boards were on a freeze. I was working at a Catholic school as well. The archdiocese was on a freeze, but I still loved helping people. I just wasn't sure if the education aspect was for me, and I guess the universe kind of conspired with me at the time that I was I, having a first quarter life crisis. And I was bringing food to my ex-boyfriend at a T-Mobile store, and the person in front of me just started talking to me. Completely on accident, actually. I guess I was having a quarter-life crisis, and I was studying education. It was 2010, and we were right in the middle of the recession, and I wanted to become a guidance counselor. I was studying elementary ed. I had my minor in psychology, and I was about to graduate. And I loved the aspect of helping people. It's just something didn't feel right. So I completely on accident, I guess the universe conspired for me at the right moment. I went into a T-Mobile store and I was bringing my ex-boyfriend food and the line was really long and there was a guy in front of me that just started talking and he had turned around and he had told me, hey, I've been in this line for 20 minutes and it hasn't moved. And my response was, oh, great, I can't wait. I made him laugh because I was extremely snarky. And he just started talking to me. And it turns out that he was uh, franchising um, a business that he had owned. It was a restoration company. And he, at the time, had seven locations. And he owned two of them. And he needed help because he had no idea what he was doing. And I have a problem with saying yes to life in general. So I said yes to this man that I just met and offered me a job. And two weeks later, I started working for the franchise. And at the time, they had no set systems for bookkeeping, no QuickBooks, no Sage, no Wave Apps, um, no operations manual. Their first disclosure document ever made, pretty much no systems and processes in place. So I um, went in there and just deep dove into a company that I had no knowledge of. And what I learned from it was I still got my fix of helping people just by reading their finances. I loved just getting to know all the business owners and what their different goals were and how to pretty much align everything financially. It was kind of like a puzzle for me of what's working and what's not working. 
for a business because everything is different um, be, between business to business. Every kind of different, every kind of business is different. Every business owner is different. So everybody has different goals for themselves and what they want to achieve. And um, after about seven years in that business, I had grown the franchise. I was on the core team that helped it grow from seven locations when I started to over 150. And again, I have a problem with just staying comfortable and I have a problem with saying yes to life. So I was thinking, you know what, I think I could do this on my own. And I went off on my own and I now do it for multiple companies. And I still have the transition of dancing because I, I still get my fix and everything. And it really is kind of like a dance because you have to kind of read the other person and see where they're going um, and kind of just follow along with everything. So it's definitely quite a, quite a transition, but I love all of it. Well, that's fantastic. That's great. So I'm sure there are things that you have faced uh, since you went into business because you weren't trained as a business person and neither was I. So that's kind of a common thing we have, <laughs> but uh, as well as the dancing, but uh, you're kind of thrown into it and you have to figure out the, the things to do, but you're doing very, um, very technical business work. I mean, you're providing uh, patterns and finances and budgets and things that I hate. So <laughs> tell us uh, the obstacles that you face, Karina, in doing this. Oh, um, so when I went into this industry, I clearly had no idea what I was doing. So I was kind of just sink or swim mentality. I don't like failing at things. And so I kind of just from the beginning deep dove into it. And I realized that um, I, I just have a passion for looking at these numbers and figuring out what they mean and just helping others with it. So it's a, it's very analytical and there had definitely been troubles because I, I kind of went in with the mentality of thinking, okay, you know, whatever I did for this industry for seven years, I could just transfer over and do it for multiple industries. And that is completely different. I learned the hard way that no one industry is the same. No one business is the same. No, nobody's goal is the same in business. So if you treat every company the same way, they're not going to get the same results and you're not going to get happy people. So you really have to listen. And I think that was the hardest part for me is listening to the goals and what my clients need uh, as far as bookkeeping and financial analytics go. Wow. So, so, um, what what do you wish you had done uh, when you started out, Karina, that you didn't do? I mean, people always say to me, what do you wish, you know, I've been in business for 60 years now. Uh, what do you wish you had done differently? And I just always say better, bigger, faster, because that's kind of who <laughs> I am. But what what are some of the things you wish you could have done when you started out? Listening to my gut more is definitely the biggest one. I've realize that my first impression and my first thoughts of people are usually the ones that are right. And I at least tend to second guess what my thoughts and my opinions and my feelings are, whether it's towards people or what to do next in my business. Um, and that's, that's been huge because I realized that my first impulse is usually the right one. So I need to stop doubting myself and second guessing what I feel is right or wrong and just go impulsively with my inclinations. You know, that's funny that you should say that because um, one of the things I believe in mentors and I believe in coaches and I believe in learning from others. But on the other hand, uh, the things that I have done that I did not like were things that my gut told me not to do. So yeah. it's interesting that you say that. And I will tell you, sometimes my gut is wrong, though. I mean, there oh, are yeah. times that I have had a first impression of somebody, and then after I got to know them, I realized, boy, were you off the mark. But <laughs> on the other hand, uh, most of the things that have not worked out for me have been things I should not have done in the first place. So um, that's interesting for our listeners to know is that listen to your gut. I mean, have coaches, have mentors, have advisors, uh, look to others, read a lot, find out what others have done, but listen to your gut. So um, what do you think that you're not good at, Karina? I'm not good at saying no. I <laughs> You know, I have to say, one of, one of my mentors said, no is a complete sentence. <laughs> so 
I told um, him, yeah. So you agree to too many things that you shouldn't. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yeah. I love challenges. And again, it kind of goes hand in hand with listening to my gut. When I, for example, um, I run Spartan races for fun. I do obstacle course racing. And when I'm injured and I'm training for a race and someone asks me, oh, you know, let's go let's go for an eight, eight mile run. I'm like, sure. Why not? Let's just do it. It'll make me stronger in the end. But in my gut, I, this is just an example, not related to business, but when in my gut, I think, oh, you know, I, I maybe shouldn't do this. It's not the smartest choice for my body. And it, it goes hand in hand with business. I mean, if there is no one client and no one business is, is the same, some people are great fits. Some people aren't great fits. And again, I love to make people happy. So Saying yes to a client that I may not feel would be the right fit has happened. And it's been definitely a learning process to learn how to say, you know what, this may not be a good fit for you or for me. Let's point you in the right direction so you could get what you want out of your business. So, I mean, that's that's really important, whether it's in your personal life or your professional life, that when someone asks you something or encourages you to, you to do something and instinctively you think, no, this is not the best idea. Listen to what your head is saying. Yes. But yes. evidently you still do, you know, a lot of physical activity between your dancing and the biking and everything else. So is that what you do to clear your head or do you do you do uh, meditation or what else do you do to get yourself out of what you're doing every day? Oh, all of the above. So I I am very active. I still dance. My my husband danced also. That's how we met. So definitely dancing is our happy happy place. And I love running. I love exercising. I used to teach yoga. So any sort of physical activity is, I joke around and say, it's how I burn off my crazy. And it's just getting outdoors or getting physical. That's, that's definitely my happy place and my therapy and just life in general. Well, I agree with you. I mean, I'm one of those people that um, I work out all the time and uh, can't work out the way I used to, but I do, you know, I, I'm moving every single day, that's for sure. Yes. Uh, but the one thing I didn't have in my husband, he was a great guy, but I can tell you he could not dance. He had great <laughs> rhythm. He had great rhythm in the shower. He would be singing. He would be, but, you know, get him on a dance floor and that was it. I mean, you know, I think one of the only few arguments that we had was when I was trying to teach him how to dance. And it was just so frustrating to me that I just gave up because it was just, it was just impossible. But uh, yeah, you're very lucky you have that. But what are, what are some of the common myths that you found uh, by being in business? Common myths that I found. So one of the biggest ones is that you don't need to do your books right away. And I think I recently read that it's about 83% of small businesses fail because they don't understand their cash flow. So biggest myth is, you know, it's never too early to start your books, get your systems and processes start right from the get go. So then you don't have a huge mess to pick up when it's too late. You know, it's interesting because, again, going back to my first years, remember, I was 21 when I went into business, so I was really young. And uh, all I knew was about business. I'd never had a business course. Uh, and my math was adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. That was it. <laughs> but I knew what came in and what went out and the rest was profit. And that was kind of how I lived. I know, you know, let if $2 came in and $1 went out, then my profit was a dollar. And of course, in that going out were people that I had to pay for uh, employees and for, you know, uh, uh, products that I had to have in my office to make sure it ran well and um, other things, you know, whether it was advertising, marketing, promoting, whatever. And uh, th that's what I kind of lived by, almost like a cigar box. You know, here are the receipts. <laughs> here's the income. OK, tell me what's left. And that's how I operated. And you know something? It wasn't any more complicated than that, Karina. It was. It was. Uh, um, it was just amazing how I functioned. And yet, I always knew how much money I had. So, was there was was there another myth that you had? Yeah. So another one is that you know you can do it all yourself in the beginning. I feel a lot of business owners go into business because. They feel they, they know their industry, which is great. I mean, you went into business because you have a passion for whatever it is that you're into. Um, but 
an issue is you feel you could do it all because you know the industry, so you want to be in it because that's where your passion is. But at the same time, you also have to run a business. You have to, you have, to have employees, and you, you feel like you have to do it all yourself. You don't have to do it all yourself. Um, you're in business to grow. You're in business to scale. You're in business for whatever your own personal goals are. You don't have to do it all yourself. You have to find the help and find your passions and kind of reflect it on other people um, and kind of get out of the way of being on autopilot and focus on, take a step back and focus on the growth of your business. Um, don't try and do it all yourself. And that's so true. You know, um, I mean, in the beginning, you will. You will be chief cook yeah. and bottle washer. You know, you'll yeah. be taking out the trash. You'll be answering the phone. You'll be supplying whatever service or product you provide. But uh, you need to hire somebody as soon as you can't do that anymore. Yeah. And the whole thing about hiring is to hire slow and fire fast. And uh, take your time getting the right person. Don't hire somebody because you're desperate. Make sure that you, you get the right fit for the person. And remember... Yeah. Yeah. Because a person does a one job well doesn't mean that they will do another job well. There are people who are workers who will never be managers. And there are people who are workers who should always be managers. So you have to look at that and, and see uh, what that's a, a, a part of as well. So um, what would you say is the best compliment you ever received? Whether it was from a, 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 a vendor or a customer, who would you say gave you the best compliment you ever had? Um, the best compliment I ever had was definitely one of my clients. He was one of my first ones, and he referred me to three other business owners that he knew. And for me, that was kind of because it not only meant that he was happy with my services, but it meant that he trusted me enough to give it to his close friends that were also business owners. So I think that that in itself, is, it, it, makes, it makes my whole month pretty much when I get referrals. That's, those are always the best compliments for me. Well, you know, uh, referrals are your best source of business. I mean, you can advertise the market all you want, but when somebody says to you, you really need to use this person, there's no higher compliment or no better uh, potential client. If you screw that up, you've really done a bad <laughs> job. Because, I mean, it's just like, you know, somebody asking about a dentist or a doctor. Uh, you know, you don't necessarily want to go through the directories to find out who you should go to, but if your primary says go to this person or if your friend says, I had the same problem and this is who you should go to, I mean, you're going to listen to that because you you, you know that person and you uh, respect what they have to say. So getting a referral is probably one of the best things that you can ever have, and that's absolutely the truth. So yeah. um, uh, what what do you do? What is your typical day like? My typical day. All right, so... Um, I usually wake up at 5 in the morning, and I make coffee, I'll go for a run, and then I come home, fold some clothes, take a shower, and then start my day. Usually, I'm at my computer at 6.30 or 7 in the morning, and I'll answer emails, make a few phone calls, and then just do all the tedious tasks, work on my leads, and then from there, I'll usually finish being at my desk around 5 or 5.30, and I'll go to the gym again, and then I'll come home, I'll cook, and then I don't like leaving anything in my inbox, so I have a horrible habit, and I know I shouldn't, but I do. I check my email before bed, and then I'll get ready for bed. I'll read, I'll, I'll usually read a chapter a night, um, and then I go to sleep. I'm very routine, very boring, and I love it. So uh, you're up very early. What time do you go to yes. sleep? Uh, usually around 9.30. Okay, so there you have it, folks. You can see that you can get up early if you go to bed early. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. so that's the important thing. And there are a lot of people who get their workouts done before they go to the uh, office or before they start their job. Even if they're working out of their home, uh, that's what they do. They get up and they do their workout and that's it. So um, it's something that you should think about. So... Uh, I know that you are offering our listeners um, a gift. I don't know exactly what it is, but why don't you tell our listeners what the gift is that you're offering and how they can yes. reach you? So I have a few handouts of, you know, 15-minute bookkeeping tips, um, what's deductible, what's not deductible, because every year these change, and pretty much, you know, a cheat sheet on how to organize your business and a basic chart of accounts and pretty much a 30-minute goal setting with me. 
And I would love for everyone to reach out to me and just get all these freebies from me. And my they can reach out to me by my email, which is Karina, K-A-R-I-N-A, at Bravo, B-R-A-V-O, the number one, projects with an S at the end, dot com. Fantastic. So if you want to get these tip sheets and learn about what you need to do to uh, get yourself ready for your your taxes or an audit or anything else that you're going through, if you will get these tip sheets from Karina, I think they'll be a great uh, help to you. And you can get those by uh, emailing her at Karina, K-A-R-I-N-A, at Bravo1, the number one, projects.com. Well, what else have we not talked about, Karina, that you would like our audience to know either about you or your business? Um, that's a great question. There's so, I feel like there's so many thoughts running in my head right now. <laughs> um, I, I cater to everyone. So whether this sounds like something that you're not sure if you want or if you're not sure what you need or you just, you just want to talk because you don't know where to get ahead and you don't you're not necessarily looking for someone to hire for your books or to or for financials, but you just want to pick someone's brain. I'm definitely here. I I love helping, like I've said multiple times before. So I I'm not going to charge you for a quick five ten minute phone call. Just I don't know what I should do. I'll definitely listen. So yeah, I mean even even if you're hesitant, just reach out to me. You have nothing to lose. That sounds great. That sounds wonderful. Well, you know. Um... Sometimes when you go to a person uh, for for the things that Karina provides, you say, well, they don't really understand or they, they don't know my business. But first of all, processes and procedures are processes and procedures, mm-hmm. and they work for everybody. So you may have something that's unique about what you do, but the way to report them, the way to keep track of them, that's a process. That's a procedure. And Karina can help you with that because that's what she does for various businesses, not just one. Uh, The other thing is, is that she's a real person. She has a a life outside of her business and she works out. She keeps her head on straight. And that's what's key and that's what's important. So um, I think, you know, if you if you are looking for someone who can help you get your act together, as I like to say, (laughs) get your act together and make sure you're going in the right direction and and doing the right things. Karina is the one that you should be in touch with because she's helping you do all of that. So if you want to check her out, you can go to her website, which is bravo1projects.com. Uh, if you are interested in getting her tip sheet, go to her email, karina at bravo1projects.com. And if you're looking to maybe create a process of your own, I mean, this is something she can help you with. Maybe there is something very unique and different about what you do. And Karina can help you discover that and and do it properly. So there's a reason for all of this. And uh, uh, hopefully, you know, that's going to be something that um, uh, she's going to be able to help you with. So, Karina, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, We really, really liked to hear from you and hear what you have to say and to know that you don't need a business degree or you don't need, you just need common sense to do a business (laughs) well. You just need common sense and you have to be able to know when to say no to somebody that asks. (laughs) Thank you so much for being with us today, Karina. Thank you so much, Gail. You've had the opportunity to get to know me over the last few years, and I'd like to get to know you as well. One of the things I'm offering is training for the media. I have a wonderful program that will get you ready for any radio or TV interview you might be offered. Many of you are doing wonderful things, but no one knows about them. Others of you are successful and wonder what's next. Whether you're in a business or have a special cause or a specific event you're promoting, media can help and I can help you master your message so you can master the media. If this sounds interesting to you, email me at gailcarson13 at gmail.com with media training in the subject line. I promise I will be in touch. Thanks for listening to Women in Business. I hope you enjoyed today's show. And if you have any suggestions as to who you'd like me to have as a guest, just email me at gailcarson13 at gmail.com. Be sure to check out www.sob6tips.com. And in the meantime, go to www.spunkyoldbroad.com 
to see the resources I have for you.